Uh, we're here for the meeting of the Waterbury Select Board on Monday, February the 13th, 2023 at the Steel <coughs> Community Room. Everyone tomorrow, be nice to your Valentine. It's an important thing. Uh, first thing on the agenda is to approve the agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda agenda as written, unless there's <coughs> unless there's any changes. <laughs> I'll second it. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion on the agenda? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Next thing on the agenda is the consent agenda items. The minutes of the January 30th, 2023 meeting and to approve a first and second class liquor license for the Country Club of Vermont. Approve a second class uh, liquor license for Thatcher Hill LLC. Approve a second class uh, liquor license for Village Market and approve a second class liquor license for King Drugs number 101. We have a motion to accept the consent agenda items. So moved. Thank you. We have a second. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussions on the consent agenda items? There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The consent agenda item is passed. Now is the time on the agenda is we give time for the public to comment on anything that's not a warned uh, agenda item. If anyone wishes to say anything, if they could step forward and please be brief. Or if anyone's on Zoom. There being no one. So, um, Mike. Quick question. Can sure. I can I step off of the select board sure. member for a second? You can be a public and be a public. I think I just want to bring something to the table and I should have caught it on the agenda and added it to that. But uh, I don't I just want people to be aware of a couple of things. Um, we had Lieutenant White here a while back talking about you know drug drug problems. Uh, I, I just want people to be aware of the fact that my niece, who works part-time at Shaw's, um, was involved in a Nar Narcam rescue effort of two addicts that had gone in and used the bathroom and overdosed and were lying on the Shaw's floor on their way out. And she took the bull by the horns because she was the manager at the time, ran to the pharmaceutical part of the store and grabbed the, the Narcan that the pharmacist gave to her and administered the Narcan to these two people. Uh, they recovered almost instantly, bolted out the door to a waiting vehicle that was outside and took off. Uh, I also had a friend stopped in the other day just to visit briefly in the morning. He's a frequenter of the mobile station from about three o'clock on. He witnessed, <coughs> witnessed a drug transaction that took place there out in the parking lot with a couple well-known <coughs> people in that industry. Uh, so I just wanted to people you know, everybody to understand that, you know, my cries for awareness of this problem is closer to our doorstep than we all realize. Uh, and I don't, you know, I just quite honestly don't know where to go with it from here. Because um, like I said before, my concerns about it consuming our community like it has so many others is a real worry of mine. Uh, so I just wanted everybody to know that. No, just in response to, uh, I don't think that anyone on the board feels that oh. fent fentanyl and drugs are not a problem, yeah. but there's a 
there's only a certain amount of things that we can do. The state police and stuff like that. We don't have a, you know, local policing except for our policing contract. I think it's it's like you said, people like the manager who have their eyes and ears open <coughs> on things like that. It's kind of a shame that the people just bolt it out the door, you know. Well, the, the, my problem is that's the consequence of a problem. Not we're not focused. Right. We never focus on the cause. Right. We only focus on the consequence. Now I think there, there, are, there are a lot of places. You know, for Howard Mental Center. You know, there are a number of places that have drug programs, and I think they they serve. I think some of the ones even on these on the uh, agenda for the warrant for you know have to deal with drug issues and stuff like that, but. Can, can I do something personally? Can this board? I don't know. Roger? Yeah, well, when, I'm, when Lieutenant White was here uh, testifying about this issue, uh, I asked him what we could do, and he said uh, to let him know, you know, and let uh, his officers know what was going on. So I'm just wondering, did you report that back? I here? haven't yet. Mm -hmm. It just happened here re recently. So, uh, I they were aware that at the time. Yeah. They were. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And just in response to what you said, this, I was at the regional emergency <clears throat> management meeting last last week, and they, someone in in the group raised a uh, issue of Narcan, you know, and I emailed <coughs> Gary, and he responded, you know, you know, I didn't know, I wasn't sure what resources that we have. He, and he responded that the fire department does have Narcan, you know, there, which I was, I thought that would be the case, but I wasn't sure. And Waterbury, you know, he said Waterbury Ambulance, and that would be my first place that, you know, we have Wasi, you know, would be the place that I would refer any kind of situation like that. But the fire department's, you know, another thing, and probably, again, I, I wouldn't be surprised our two, Police officers probably have Narcan. So, but you, I don't know if you're missing my point. I, oh, I, don't, I, I don't think you are. I mean, no, but, I'm not we shouldn't even have to be get to the point of having to use Narcan. Right. That's what I'm telling you. It's, you know, I, I wish I could come up with, and I think about it a lot. What could we do to stop this before it even gets to that point? Uh, I, I hear you loud and clear. I just don't know if there's a silver bullet. Yeah. That we can deal with. Mike? Gary? Uh, just for clarification, uh, the fire department does have Narcan on three of our trucks, four of our trucks, but it is for our members for use. If we go to an incident and right. something happens to one of our members, we do not run first response for the ambulance. Even if something happens down the road, that is, that's an ambulance issue, and the Narcan is for us. I, I just didn't want people out in the community all of a sudden to <laughs> say, oh, I'll just call the fire department because we won't go. And it's not our gig. Yep. Thanks for adding that, Gary. Sure. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Thanks for bringing that up. Thanks. Anything else in the public section that someone wants to bring up? There being none, we'll move on to the base agenda. First item is approval of. Road closure for Little League uh, Parade on 429 from 1 to 2 o'clock with a rain date of uh, 430. Scott, do you want to come on down? Hey, I'd love to. Good evening, everybody. Hi, Scott. So everybody knows me except for probably Tom, correct? So Tom and I have actually emailed back and forth. Um, so trying to uh, rejuvenate some of the past things that I remember in the village of Waterbury when I was a kid. So uh, I've taken over the Clyde Woodmore Little League program this year. I, I had it in 2005, 2006 as a board member and come back and run the program. Um, very close to my heart, I have a grandson who's playing now, so that's how they thrust me back into this. You know, my oldest kid's 30 years old, so what's Little League mean to me in here? Um, but uh, I would really love the opportunity to give, you know, these uh, the community members and parents and players and everybody that's uh, had a part of this over the last 55 or 58 years that the program has been run in Waterbury under the Clyde with more Little League logo, and uh, take a, an opportunity on the 29th of April, which would be considered an opening day, even though we probably won't be on the field still the middle of June, the way it's going. Um, and I would like to uh, assemble 
our parade for the players to start down here at the back row field. Um, assemble on the field, off the, off the beaten path, so we can set it up, make sure we have things going. I've actually spoken with, uh, with Sally Dillon, and I'm assuming she probably had spoke with Gary about it also, maybe uh, fire department getting involved there at the same time. Um, I don't know what that would look like for the SP response, if any at all, but I remember the days of Wayne Sorter, the Red Gear one, and the gang all running the blue lights for us up and down the, up and down Main Street for that 45 minutes. The idea would be to come out on the Main Street, make our way down the main venue of town, down over the hill to the first, uh, first right hand turn to the state complex, and then disassemble from there. So we're talking three, four tenths of a mile. There'll be banners, there'll be, I don't know. Park Street, is that oh, Park, Road. Park, Road. Park Road. And that would be, like I said, I'm thinking uh, these players are somewhere between 5 and 12 years of age. Parents will be involved at the same time. There'll be banners for sponsors. We picked up uh, 13 local sponsors this year and probably fundraised between seven and $10,000, which is something I don't think they have done in a long time. And uh, really like to get back to the grassroots piece of it and you know, give the community something for the kids to be able to do and have some memory makers at the same time. So that's what I'm here for tonight is to see if there's a permit involved or what our program has to do to work with the town and the facilities to be able to, you know, make that happen. So you'd like the, uh, the traffic to be uh, <coughs> cut off so that you could... I think if we did it the same way we do a typical 4th of July parades, you know, I mean, I don't know exactly know how they assemble or disassemble. I just know having a staging area then having to stop traffic at the at the dry bridge, at the yeah. bridge, work our way in, and then have a, a, a follow car behind us to keep people away so we're not going through the meander and carry it on until we get them in a safe place back off and then we resume as, you know, as currently set through. So, maybe I'm misunderstanding here. Is, well, first question is, is this a route that you, you used to take prior? This is a route that I remember back. in the 70s and okay. 80s that we did. Yep. And are we talking about rerouting traffic? Down, well, I, down I don't know Street? how that would go. It's an okay, hour that's why I guess road closure. Yeah, same, same question. Uh, yeah, right. Sir. So it's an hour to road closure. You know, right. obviously people traveling from one end of town to try to get to 100. I mean, I don't know if it's a if it's a matter of taking them through Coffee Roses back up through. I don't want to impede right. on residences either because, like I said, I've never done this before. I know we've done mm -hmm. it in the past. I know. You know, Gary and his gang and the, our village police before we had them always uh, found a way to do it. Is there a way that we can do it now and I can work with you guys and you know whatever program pieces that we need to to get this 45 minutes to be able to do it. They're doing them in Waitsfield, they're doing them in Stowe. I, I imagine we could probably figure out how to do it here in Waterbury. Yeah, it sounds like out, out by uh, the Park Row Cafe Coffee roasters down. Yeah, there. they'd have to go on, on to Stowe Street, Street uh, to uh, Union Street. Uh, well, Union Street or Stowe Street, right? They can yeah. split right there right. at the yeah. bridge and go either way. Um, mm -hmm. well, we'd have to this is on a Saturday. Stop to end around. It's a Saturday, the 29th of April. Okay. And I picked the later time. I picked the later time in the afternoon, not for One to two. Yeah. But we, uh, we had a photographer who was coming to do lead photos at Crossing Brook starting at 2.30 and he had done the Burlington Little League program for 25 years and I couldn't get him to shake to make it later or later or earlier for me to be able to accommodate you know, what we were trying to accomplish. So we got him, that was his date, that was his time, I didn't I have no control over that. Are you requesting police... Uh... Escort front and back. Is that well, I'm or? I want I'm looking for safety for a hundred kids and their parents yeah. out on Main Street in Waterbury. So, so I got to put a fire truck or ask for a fire truck <coughs> in the back with lights and somebody to the front to keep the pace moving the way we want to make sure that the the traveling public goes in the direction they need to go for that 45 minute interval. You know that's what we do. That's the pre planning piece. Yeah. So we currently don't have our on duty guys police officers on Saturdays Saturday. or Sundays. Uh, I had mentioned in the past, I don't know if it went anywhere, whether or not Bill talked to uh, BSP about alternating, uh, potentially alternating days. There's flexibility, I think, in terms of time that they could serve. So 
And I've, got, or not, and I've got, or got, actually got a couple of parents who are in the VSP world and not volunteered their time on the state's equipment, but I think they would probably be right. more than happy to, if it was a volunteer thing and it was you know cleared through the VSP commander, I don't think that would be a big deal. They're at MQID, they're at River of Life, you know, all those things are on. We yeah, I did uh, traffic control for River of Life Parade. Right. Rotarians have done that for a uh, truck down at the uh, train trestle over here. And then we had we staged uh, and had a volunteer down that end. And then uh, there were others uh, up at the other intersections. Um, and I did uh, Winooski Street. So it does take a bit of organizing uh, of volunteers to make sure that uh, those, all those intersections are, are staffed. Yeah. And we don't have the Vermont State Police to do it necessarily. So I think we, we would need your help uh, in terms of recruiting volunteers and you know, or getting safety vests so that people know that, that they're official. Uh, I did safety and compliance for the Agency of Transportation for 31 and a half years. Uh, well, then you bucket of mess. <laughs> <laughs> bucket of mess. I have a bucket of knowledge when it comes to routing traffic. Mm -hmm. I know the MUTCD book frontwards and backwards. Okay. And I bet we could probably divvy up some vests and some cones mm -hmm. where I could get a group of volunteers together, do a little mini training with them on what we're looking for. That'd that be really on the same sheet of music. It'd make that happen. We've got cones. I'm sure we've got some Jersey barriers. You know, uh -huh. yeah, I just want to say, Scott, I, I had a conversation good. about this with we'll work with Tom <coughs> on Friday. I'm very supportive. I think anything for kids is a great thing. Anything for public side. Little, little League, I played Little League, you know, it's, it, it, it's a great thing. And, and no disrespect to anybody who's run the program or been anything to do with the program in the past, right. but it's really struggling. And it's not, yeah. it's not because of just the program itself. I mean, you've got, you've got club sports, you've got spring soccer, I mean, this is, there's so there. many there's things for these kids to do, and there. very little for them to decide on what they're going to do. The, the only thing that, that both me and Tom kind of, and I think I mentioned this, and maybe you want to think about doing that. I know traditionally it went to Park Row, but if it just went the route from Dak Row to Stowe Street or thereabouts, it will shorten the parade a little bit, lessen your requirements for <coughs> public safety. And two, I think it will be good for the kids because if you compact it a little bit more, you might have more people. You know, instead of, you know, the longer you have, the more people are going to be right. spread and out. Plus, and my other problem with that is that some of the businesses that have donated money as sponsors, you know, the see. reservoir, oh, those groups sure. down the hill that we have never had before, mm -hmm. is going to have a banner in there that they're probably going to want to see their patrons and the community see come down the hill. So right. I'm trying to do a service to the community at the same time by keeping right. our local business owners happy for them to engage in local stuff for our children. Well, I was thinking, is that like you could probably go over to like across from Pro Pig, you know, and dis so go dis straight. yeah, disengage into the parking lot. Yeah. And I'm just thinking about the so assembly. Which one? Which parking lot? The, the one next to the new end of the woods. Oh, the paid park. The paid yeah. park. The, our our new paid park parking lot. That that'd be a good area, you know. And I think you could probably get. You got to pay for all the spots. <laughs> well, I, I I think Eric would be pretty. Well, see, and I, and right. So, I, and I'm here in February because this is in April, and we got some time. Right. And I don't want to come in here in the April meeting and say, "Hey, guys, in two weeks, I'm <coughs> parade. What can we do?" And, and that's I'm a good way to do it. I'm just kind of have some pre-organization. I'm just thinking of the best thing because to me. If you compact it a little bit more, you'll have more of an impact. And kids love to be walking in front of you. Know. I agree. And like I said, we've got 41 registered players right now, which to me in February in Vermont is a pretty good number. And I'm anticipating when we start our indoor gym starting the 4th of March, that's eight Saturdays, and they can't come in and play or practice unless they're registered due to insurance. So I'm my my best ballpark guess I'll have somewhere between seventy five and one hundred and ten kids. And that's a that's quite an assembly area when you start talking to parents, vehicles. That's why I thought using the Dak Row facility and using the land and coming up onto Main Street would be a great place for parents to park, a great place to assemble, come out through, make it short and sweet, come back in, disassemble on the other end. Get some kids 
good kids that will get you into the Little League World Series, and that will give you just more publicity. We're, we're, we're here training memories. Dan, Dan does too. Just oh, yeah, sorry. That's okay. well, listen, <laughs> Um, I just want to say thank you. I appreciate it. I think conceptually, um, I'm certainly totally on board. I appreciate you coming in early. I guess I would defer to Tom and staff just to understand what the process is. Clearly, we do events like this with River of Light, but who should the point staff person be? And my personal feeling would be conceptually, I think it's great. If you want to do a save the day, personally, I feel really good. Before a final sign off, I would just want to see those plans about what intersection to where, who's helping out, and what does our state police or public safety look like? Assuming we get all that in order, I would feel totally comfortable signing off. If you have it by the next meeting, that's great. But I would go to Tom in terms of what's the process for a community member and who should he be in touch with? He should be in touch with the Emergency Management Director. Uh -huh. Hilarious. <laughs> He's in there going, next time. Uh, okay. okay. Danny, you have... Uh, yeah, it was really similar to Alyssa. I'm I'm really excited to see this coming back. I haven't been in town since it's you know been been a parade. I think it's great. I love. I think saving the date is perfect. Um, and then similarly, I was curious if there exists a checklist or you know an organizational procedure ish um, thing for parades. Like you know we do it for different things. Like th does something like that exist? Um, and if not, in conjunction with talking with um, Gary may be reaching out to some of the leaders of the other parades and they might, they do it so often, they might have a really nice like checklist that they use each year that could help you so you don't have to feel like you're reinventing the wheel or doing it all by yourself. Thanks, Danny. Yeah. Just sure. Scott, does this also include the girls that are playing softball? Uh, is it just? Absolutely. Okay. Just to make sure. Absolutely. As a matter of yeah, fact, we've done. We made some pretty good accommodations for that group too. We we're uh, no longer going to use the small field down here beside Main Street uh -huh. for safety reasons. And we're going to move the girls' softball programs to Anderson Field, which for us is not a really big utilized field. Right. And now we have parking, we have places for, play for kids that aren't playing. They got the playground, the tennis courts, they got the basketball court. Mm -hmm. um, it takes all those cars off of Main Street. Yeah, so that way when emergency one. services comes through or something goes awry, I don't have to worry about that anymore. Air and balls into Main Street. So it's, like I said, it's, it's a win-win. That's where I've been trying to focus my time on is how do I utilize what we have? How do I harness it all in and how do we disperse it? And that's the big one. And right now it's like just trying to get you know, community support and uh, re revive something that you know, is definitely needs to be revived. Mm -hmm. What did you say the age group was again? They start at four years old, and they play up to 12 in this program, and then they go to a Babe Ruth program or a senior little league. Because that's the, the national little league. Well, the Babe Ruth crew would be um, that River Valley actually owns the charter for them, and they, they so play they part of it. So. so registration is, is up. When, when do you have to register by? We started registration the 19th of January, and we will close it the 15th of April. Not saying that we won't take anybody after the 15th of April, but we need to cut it off somewhere because you know how that goes. You make it the 17th, someone comes in on the 19th, yeah, you make it the 1st, they come on the 12th. So you had to had to set some type of parameters. So that's where that's what we ended up with. So I might be in touch with you. Great. Any other questions? Just a little. <laughs> yeah, but I got a great we'll be time. glad to help your security. Yeah, and like I said, we're just trying to trying to get this going for everybody, and uh, hopefully, you know, take this as our maiden voyage after a long extension of not doing it, and see if we can make it an annual event. I'm sure if you ask <coughs> uh, the Rotarians, I'm sure they would be a uh, good group. Ron to... and Marge are my neighbors. Just ah. to <laughs> nothing further. If they to want say. to keep parking their boat at my house, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded good though. So just to be clear, we'll come back to you in two weeks or thereabouts with the sort of complete plan here. Further plan. So what I'll do is I will gather a list of volunteers. I will give you um, an exact parade route. Time is already there, so it'll be like 45 minutes before for assembly. The disassemble afterwards doesn't make any difference as long as we're off the main run. Um, I'll see what I can get together for any equipment that we have on <coughs> desks, combs, and then we can incorporate 
Near East and uh, in the fire department crew on top of it as long as well as uh, maybe uh, you know our Cal Highway Department that might be another good even a strobe light on the side of the road is better than nothing. Are you going to have them on floats or do you just? Like I don't want to do. I'm not looking for the the giant episode. I'm looking to. It's like opening the business. Keep it simple. You don't buy a million dollars of equipment worth of equipment and have five thousand dollars worth of work. Yeah, you know, you want to make it simple. You want to get that dry run through. Learn from your mistakes. As it gets bigger, it'll get more complicated all by itself. We don't need to. That's don't need to start at that piece. Anything else? If not, thank you for coming yeah, down. So, like I said, I will find. I'll give a list of volunteers. I'll give you a Zach parade route that I can get and gather up for equipment, and then I will come back in a couple of weeks and uh, see you guys again. Yeah, right. and on the route, just emphasis on the closures, where they are, who's doing them, right. do you have a sheriff there, is it going to be a volunteer? Yep. Um, and I'm sure after our next item, I'm sure Tom can, can confirm who the appropriate person's job is. <laughs> thank you very much. Yep, thank you guys. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Scott. Have a good Thanks. evening. Thanks, Scott. Next item on the agenda is Fire Chief Emergency Management Director discussions relating to parade policy. That time. The time perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> Scott has good planning. Scott has historically done a really good job. Um, I've been thinking about having the town, because you as the board are going to approve this. <coughs> and I think you own it if something bad happens. It, it can't be just the board saying, yes, have a parade, and then something bad happens, and you can say, well, we just approved it. We didn't say you know, how it had to be. So that's why I think there really needs to be a more in-depth policy on what the expectations are. I think this is a great start. Um, it really kicked off this past year with the River of Light. There was absolutely no coordination. I couldn't get barely from my house to Down Street. They'd already closed off Union Street, I mean uh, Stowe Street, an hour ahead of time. Hmm. They closed off Park Row at the railroad tracks, an hour ahead of time. You couldn't get down Railroad Street. I barely made it through uh, with my pickup down Union Street because there were cars parked on both sides. So there was no way that a fire truck could get up Union Street. There was no way a fire truck could, or ambulance could get up uh, Railroad Street. Any call in that area, the trucks would have to go up 100 and then down. So at some point, I think we need to have a policy that also considers people's lives and not just everybody saying, oh, this is a wonderful thing. Because it's not wonderful to the people that are negatively impacted. So, I think parades are fine. Um, you know, as far as Scott's parade, I think the fire department will have a couple of vehicles involved. That said, if we have a fire, they won't be. So, I mean, Scott's going to have to have a, a contingency for that. So, that's really my, my push, is <coughs> Waterbury has to have a, 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 some sort of policy that they go by that requires certain things. Instead of just saying, yeah, go ahead and have it. Um, and it wasn't like we could move barriers on top of the railroad overpass because it was the recreations van parked sideways on a road with nobody around. Same thing at the railroad tracks. The van was parked across the road. And if the fire trucks had to get out through to Pilgrim Park, couldn't because there was nobody with the van. So these are all problematic issues when something bad happens. And that's the way I live my life, is what happens when something bad happens and we can't get there? We've worked it out a number of years ago with the, and this past year was, to me, the best, was the uh, Stowe Street Arts Project. They, they, it's no longer on Stowe Street. It's, Right. Down to Pilgrim Park is the best place for it. But every year when I would meet with them, what is your contingency for moving all this stuff if there's a fire? We don't have a contingency. And they were never told they had to have one. 
So I, I really think Waterbury needs to take a stronger stance, maybe a more involved stance, in all these things that the board approves. That's where I come from. And I'm not saying any of them are bad. They're all great for the people that are involved and the people that like them. Uh, will I be involved in uh, the Little League trade? Probably because my wife is. So that means I get sucked in. <laughs> but, uh, and and I, I, think it's a, I, I think it's a good thing. Um, I think you've got a great kid playing this year. Yeah, probably. Um, but again, you know, if we have a fire call, it's out. And we, we may not have time to say, hey, Scott, you're going to have to find some other people. When there's a call, there's a call. So, Mike, oh, go ahead, Alyssa. No, you go first. Uh, so thinking about what you just said about the, the vehicles broadside in the, in the road with nobody there to, to manage that, um, when I think about a lot of kids walking down Main Street, you wouldn't expect something like this to happen in Vermont, but I've seen it enough across the country and other places that I worry about some maniac in a runaway vehicle. Illinois. Right. So just thinking about what you talked about here earlier, how can we prevent, you know, the situation that you're just talking about? So I'm thinking about wooden barricades and cones and maybe some ribbon. Uh, that's not going to stop a maniac in a vehicle. Um, so either if there's vehicles broadside in the, in the road, there needs to be somebody there all the time manning that vehicle to get it to move if, in fact, there is an emergency. Uh, I'd hate to do think about doing anything less than something very uh, very protective uh, where somebody could just you know you could run through some wooden barricade pretty easy uh, so whatever you know we consider I want to make sure that the safety factor is on both sides of this decision making Alyssa Oh, did Gary want to respond next? Uh, I will. Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead. I, 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 don't, I don't disagree, but I can give you a couple examples. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say the same thing. I mean, oh. thanks for being here all night. I appreciate it. I mean, Danny raised it earlier. I think, honestly, creating a policy is a win on both sides in that it helps our community right. volunteers who want to plan events have a roadmap to get to success Correct. and know that I do want to do parade and it really matters. So I need 20 volunteers. So you want to see the parade happen, you got to help out. Um, and I feel like I don't have the expertise, as you said, to be making a decision on a safety basis. So having the appropriate time to pull a municipal staff would be great. My question was going to be to Tom, are you, is anyone willing to draft it for our review? Yeah, I, don't, I mean, I would not mind helping and being involved. I, I speaking selfishly, um, how much do you expect from a non-paid emergency manager and director? Um, again, I, I volunteer a lot of time, um, and I don't mind helping, but I, do, I don't want you sitting here thinking, oh, we have an emergency management director, um, but he's not on the payroll, really. In fact, I don't think I am. But it comes from the fire department, I guess. Um, but there are things that need to happen. Um, you need to have a route that people can get around. Um, prior to the pandemic, when we were doing a parade, uh, setting up for the parade down to coffee roasters uh, for the not quite Independence Day mm -hmm. uh, parade, uh, I encountered a person, and I'm glad it was me, um, who was very angry, driving a car, and he was on the verge of out of control. Because he was inconvenienced? Because Not because he was inconvenienced, because nobody knew which way he should go and was just sending him away. And that person was very angry. That person had a firearm on the seat of his car. I tend to have a little more knowledge about that than the average person standing there. 
I was able in about five minutes to get him to calm down, but he had been told to go the wrong place by other people, not from the fire department. Yeah. And that's the type of person that does something bad when they just are getting mixed messages and they're being sent all over the place. And he clearly had some control issues. <laughs> <laughs> But it, it took about five minutes for me to get him to calm down because that, it took about four minutes for him to stop yelling and screaming. Um, and then I could get him to where he needed to go and he was appreciative. But all these things have to be taken into consideration. People have to have, you can't just say, for two hours, you can't go. Right, that's right. And it, in Scott's is 45 minutes. Um, they have to have a route where they can be guided to get around. Because if they don't, they're going to find a way. And then you have the potential of somebody getting hurt, even accidentally. Fanny has her hand raised as well, just to bring to your attention. Oh, yeah, I'll Sorry. No, you're muted. You're muted. Sorry, I thought I clicked it. Um, part of what we're doing a little later in the meeting is some goal setting. And one of my largest kind of categories is some of these procedures um, for things that we just don't. And we sometimes just wing and hope for the best. So um, this is hopefully going to be part of that conversation. And I'm curious, um, Chief, if it might work best what that the board and staff and some potentially volunteers create a draft, um, you know, and then show it to you for some input. So it's a lighter lift on you, um, but we're able to rely on your experience and expertise. More than willing to help out. I, I just don't want all of a sudden I'm just doing policy work for the town. <laughs> I'll take the lead on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, in fact, there was a, a written plan for diverting traffic for the River of Light. I saw it. Uh, uh, um, Wyatt O'Brien, who was sort of newly appointed yeah. as the coordinator for the rec department, drafted it uh, and was working with uh, Tyler Rancourt, uh, one of our two state police officers, uh, who was really acting as point on this. And, and I was interacting directly with him, so I thought that he was sort of the one that was overall managing this, but I sort of came to understand what there was certain pieces of it that weren't being intended to, like there was nobody at that van, so I sent somebody down there. There was nobody at uh, Winooski Street, so I took care of that. So you're absolutely right, and I'd be glad to serve on the committee or whatever we come up with uh, to try to come up with a real policy. Perfect. Yeah. I, I think uh, we have in the past, I think we in the past have heard, we've had plans, and they may have been plans and they went, but they may have not been executed the way they should be. And that's probably something, I think the word that you said that's most resonates with me is contingency. I don't think in a lot of these events that there are a contingency should something like what Chris said, you know, some kind of crazy person kind of, you know, you have to have contingencies for a lot of different scenarios. And those are things, yes, in, in policies, we probably need to have the groups come up with, yes, this is what their plan, this is what their volunteer structure is, this is what they have for contingencies for X, Y, Z happening. Yeah. And, and that would help you out a lot. Sure. But, I, but I understand, as we're volunteers too, you know, I, under, I totally understand and I respect time. You know, you, you donate a lot of your time toward the town. And we all kind of have to, you know, everyone has to roll up their sleeves, but I think, you know, with Tom's guidance, I think we can create a policy. And I'm not saying I don't want to be involved. I'm simply saying, don't expect that I'm going to work a 40 hour work week. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, I'm on the downhill slide in the moment. But, uh, no, it's not that type. It was caused from something else. Uh, so anyways, I, I, I think, this is a great start. I think Scott has a great start and has already thought a lot of stuff because of his previous work life. Um, but I think we really need to hammer this out so that we're not saying one thing to one group and something else to another. Right. And that every group, whether it's 
not quite Independence Day, because all we do is we set up the parade. We do not do the road shutdowns. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's Little League or River of Light or Joe Schmo just wants to have a parade down Main Street. It, there's, a, there's a plan that is consistent. So Does anybody know, did they close the streets for the antique car show? For that no, they no, don't. They just yeah. kind of go they with the flow. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, 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 sort of it's just cars, extra right. cars going down the street. Yeah, yeah. One thing we probably should do get yeah, as a part of our emergency right. management plan update is incorporate <coughs> some of this in, in that emergency action plan. Yeah, you know. It, it's all part of it. Well, it's except. It's minor part. Yeah, you know, that's something that's over in an hour. Um, so it, it doesn't mean it can't be referenced. A lot of numbers. Sure, sure. No, I, I, I get that. It's, it's just, you know, for you, you, you put your most planning in for the most the big likely events, event. The floods. So. Uh, right. Yeah. Uh, so, um, but it, it doesn't mean it can't be referenced in there and, and have some discussion. Chris, so once a plan is established, then I'm assuming that there'd be a point person to make sure that everybody's on the same page before the event takes place so that there's no, well, I wasn't told, or right. yeah. well, a lot of he said, she said kind of thing, you know? Our emergency manager would be one of those people who would have to sign off on it. Yeah, I, I think having a, re a couple people reviewing uh, the plan and saying, hmm, they, they hit everything they needed to hit. Uh, they make a recommendation or sign off on it and it goes to the select board and the board in, in general right. makes a decision. I think it should still be your decision because you're owning it. Um, mm -hmm. you, know, you don't get off that easy. Uh, <laughs> but uh, at least you're making an attempt to <clears throat> have everything done fair and equally and with safety in mind. And the flow of traffic, quite honestly. This is, we're not talking about you know, 1980s traffic anymore. <laughs> Yeah, that's was my consideration with Saturday, Saturday, Saturday yeah. mid-afternoon. There's right. still quite a few cars on the road here. Right. Scott, did you have anything else you wanted to add there? Well, I was just going to, um, on Roger's uh, conversation there in regards to the recreation department, Wyatt O'Brien actually stepped up and he's actually a board member on our program this year. Okay. So it'd, it'd be very good to have that relationship with the rec department as well as us being a private entity working in using the fields and what the rec department basically owns, you know, and, the, and their little treasure chest of stuff to be able to tap into that resource. That way I have an outlet here at the same time. He's already done this once or twice, sound like with the River of Light, and mm -hmm. some of these mistakes have been made and some of these advances have already been set up. Yeah. And if I plan on doing this as an annual event, <laughs> I would like to use the same template every single time. So. Right. We know Stowe Street's going to be off. This one's going to be off. This is our parade route. This is where we assemble. This is where we don't. You know, and then the volunteers, I mean, that's the way it is. It's like, it's like getting coaches and getting board members. You guys are, are unpaid. You come in here, you, you do your due diligence and you serve your time on committees to be able to make everything functionality for the town. And, you know, from now for the next, you know, eon. some of the decisions you make is, will affect what people do here for years. So it's like, if we can get in here and do it right the first time, make it happen, and uh, you know, get the right people in the right places, I think we can uh, set a template for the River of Light and for the 4th of July parade or whatever other you know, setup you have. And that's, and that's where I'm at with this. I mean, I'm willing to anything. It's like, if you want this to start on Winooski Street or Stowe Street and end up at Park Row, I mean, just getting it, getting it in was gonna be huge. And that's just one of the things that we're working at. And I agree, this is not 1980s traffic anymore. We used to have all the fathers who would line their cars up three wide and go right down Main Street. They didn't care where anybody went. We had the parade. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, now our program being a private program, we have a level of liability too. So some of these people that want to do these parades shouldn't have to count on the town's dime to protect them in case something happens. They should have an insurance some type of docket or declination that we, they could bring back to you with their permit or with their request and say, hey, we house, you know, we house a million dollars worth of insurance in case of these types of things that happen. And they happen in a second. And it could be, it could be lifelong for a lot of people in a lot of communities who just, some of us here really can't afford to, 
to take that kind of chance. So that's another piece that I would be pretty interested in knowing is do these people have their own type of liability insurance that will protect what they're doing in the traveled roadway that, that your group is uh, you know, given the blessing to. Thank you, your yeah, No problem. And if I might, I, I want to be clear that I met with Wyatt after the River of Lights uh, parade, and we <coughs> chatted for about two and a half hours. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of enlightenment on his part. He learned a tremendous amount in that couple hours um, of what not to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was a it was a big, a very short, but wide arcing curve for him to learn. And I I think he's will do this town. Uh, justice, I, if he sticks around, and I think he'll do a great job. Uh, it was just kind of dumped in his hands, and you know, there. When you have people that say, "Oh, just do this, do this, do this," and that's what he does, you learn quickly. Yeah. So that's that's just my piece. I'm certainly willing to to help out um, in any way that I can, uh, but I think we need to have something to protect the town. Thanks, Gary. There's and no guarantees, though. Excellent input. It's something I think we need to work on quickly. Good advice. You know, good. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Save a lot of wondering down the road, too. You know? Yeah. But As each one of these events comes up, you don't so want. Here's the other. Mixed messages. You know? A checklist of what you, what we're looking at. And maybe it's something that they should have. Some sort of insurance, yeah, you know, come, point. come come in with, you know, I know Rotary for NQID, they come, they have an insurance policy, but that's for Rotary National, you know, a local. But you you could get like a one day insurance policy for some of these events. It's going to come at a certain cost, but I think that's a small price. Event. You could, but if it's a town sponsored event. Um, they're also under our insurance. Right. So the liability is going to come back to the. Right. It always comes the back to the. the Can I interject right there for a second? You're absolutely correct. But I know any time that we we request okay, permission to do so, and we set the plan in place, they will fall on the insurance that is the primary, which is the person responsible for. The, the you know the following through of this setup and you would be the secondary carrier right. yeah. but being that some of these programs don't have that you're automatically on the books because it's going to be approved in the signature of the program right. yeah. of, you know of, of the event as I guess we'll call it. there are a lot of one day insurance kind of oh absolutely my, my wife they carry it you know for any small nonprofit my wife runs craft shows and she has um, she will rent venues and they require her to have her own LLC insurance, as well as some companies that some people that come in and set up actually have businesses. They have to have an LLC docket to be able to fall back on too. So you know none of these none of these venues want to take total responsibility for it, or it would cost you, you know, so much money to do it. You'd never be able to get in and run. In our, so, our program, there's a program called where we can require someone using our facilities to get that coverage. And right. it's exactly that, a one-day coverage. It's really yes. inexpensive. So that could be part of any... That should be maybe part of our, our policy. Melissa? I just wanted to go through next steps. I think a checklist like this, again, it's a great when a friend asks, how do I rent the steel community room in Waterbury? I literally emailed them the link to the PDF on the town website, which says, complete this form and email to... And it's all there. Um, in terms of staff, is there anything you need from us or what would you envision for next steps? Next steps is I, I hope in two weeks we can come back with Scott and Gary and not have a policy but a plan for this particular parade. And, and that'll, I think, inform the policy. And, and that plan will become, you know, in essence, that, that'll be part A. The policy would be to formalize it, write it down. Kind of a tough shape. We could probably tweak it a little bit for general policy. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Great. Anything else on that? If not, we'll move on to the next topic. Uh, select board participation in the interview uh, process for planning and zoning director. Yes. You want to take this one? Sure, this is an interesting position. <laughs> so the <coughs> planning commission uh, by state law makes a recommendation to the select board 
uh, about who to hire. You do not have to take that recommendation. The select board hires the planning and zoning director, um, and then the manager manages that person. So the commission makes a recommendation to you, you hire, and worse ever came to worse, I fire. And so it, it makes sense for all three parties to be involved in the interview process. And so I, I'm looking for, um, I think, a couple of volunteers to find the time when we get there to um, be involved with the planning commission. And, <laughs> <You run. laughs> sit in those sit in those interviews. Um, the job is advertised, um, and the advertisement uh, resumes are due around the end of the month. So I'd anticipate the interviews would be some point in March. Um, have to coordinate it with a lot of parties here to get it all done. Do we have any follow-up here? <laughs> well, I just want to know a little bit more information first. Um, any idea of like how many how many times they we'd meet? Um, depends on applicants, I guess. Um, depends on the number of applicants. Um, is 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 there different interviews for different? Parts or is everybody all? Um, I mean, similar to the process we went through for you. Mm. You had many, <coughs> too many. You had several different parties interviewing the same person. I would think. Um, is it just one party? I think it'd be nice to do it as one party. That's how I envision it. The planning commission, you know, a couple select board members, myself, and I think I'm hoping after. Um, the first round, which might be three or four candidates, we can boil it down to one or two finalists, or maybe a second round. Um, so that's my just my vision for the process. I think again, it helps to have everyone in the same room, given it's really a joint hiring and management process here. So I'm hoping we can coalesce around a candidate pretty quickly. Um, if we can't, I think that's a sign that you need to re-advertise and go back to the drawing board. Second question is this daytime type activity, I suspect. Um, or not. Evenings, any idea? Probably evenings because I think the planning commission would want to try to fit this into their regular meetings as best they can. I've told their chair that I think everyone's going to need to be a little bit flexible here to try to make it work. I think it's a little bit unusual for job candidates to interview in the evening too. But I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be evenings based on their they're actually meeting now, I believe. Okay. So <laughs> a couple of off Mondays. And you said it'd be you're thinking about the time frame would be what a month from now. Resumes are due at the end of the month. End of February. Yeah. So we'd be doing the interviews in March, April. So number one question outside of you, who's going to be on the board? <laughs> so to volunteer for this now as a as a board member may not and you don't you <laughs> may don't, not come to fruition you after you don't need to have any you can yeah, you can leave gonna, you can leave it to the planning commission to bring you they're a person. You a of a guarantee so here. <laughs> I think it makes sense to have select board presence on this interview panel, but there there's no obligation. You can let the planning commission and myself lead that process, and we can bring you hopefully a final candidate. And then you can simply choose to take the recommendation or not. You don't even have to interview. That's not spelled mm -hmm. out in the law. Mm -hmm. All the law says is that the planning commission makes a recommendation to you. Right. Yeah. No, I'd be interested in <coughs> assisting. It's just. And we can two, set this up as a my workload, in person Zoom combination. Or one, my workload, two, whether I'll even be on the board or not. Uh, you know, we'll see. So. I think we could take volunteers who are interested in the process. I know everyone who's presently on the board at least is right. You know, yes, they're not guaranteed a seat, right. but should someone not, you know, be appointed, I think you, we can make a substitution. Who is interested, first of all? Well, again, I'm interested. Chris, I know you said. Under. Any others? 
I mean, I'm happy to do it. As I think you all know, I was on the planning commission before, so I don't know if that's an asset or a liability in terms of coming from that perspective, but I'm certainly interested in planning and zoning and happy to participate if we would like a rep. I think that'd be a big asset if I'm the background there. Right. Um, I, I unfortunately am planning to take a bit of time off in uh, March uh, and uh, maybe even a uh, couple days in April. So I don't think I'd be a good candidate, um, but I would love to participate in the final interview uh, to say yay and nay. Yeah, I'm kind of in a little similar. One, because my participation in the town manager search, I would like to give some other people opportunities to do that. I think that's, one, is really important. Uh, and two, I don't know, I, you know, after town meeting, I may want to get out of Vermont for a little bit, <laughs> Some, somewhere warmer. Although, although the way things are going, it may be pretty warm after town meeting. Yeah, you might be better off just staying here. Exactly. Danny, anything? Any um, in input? I, sorry? <laughs> Any input? Yeah, I well, I had sent an email. I was going to kind of wait until the end of the meeting, but I'm unfortunately not going to be available. Um, I, we can talk more about it later. I'm having surgery in a few weeks, so I'm going to be um, low, very low capacity for the month of March. Um, so I just don't have. I, I would love to. Um, I had a, but I just don't have a. Just can't. Totally understand. Good luck with good luck with your surgery. <laughs> well, Thank you. I'll take it. Um, that said, I agree. I th I think it's super valuable to have select board members on that committee. I agree, Chris. We don't know who's going to be elected, so I think just like we said, if we have volunteers and move forward and uh, hoping for the best, and then see what happens with town meeting. Okay. So we cut that too. Will the two of you consider volunteering? Okay. And we're not a quorum. I don't know how you're winning. I mean, I know it would be personnel anyway, but two volunteers helps. Right. Yeah, if it works out that I can be available to do it, I'll certainly help do it. Yep. I think the committee could be pretty flexible enough. I agree. We'll work. There's, there may be other people that are going to have some issues. It's just like even the town manager, you know, selection, you know, we, we worked it out. <coughs> I'll move that uh, we nominate uh, Liz and Chris to be our representatives on the uh, selection committee. Thank you. We have a second. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you for volunteering your time, both of you. Thanks for having us. Okay. Next item, uh, as was discussed before, we're going to have a discussion of 2023 goal setting. Um, Mike and I talked about this a bit on Friday, and there's been um, trips and grabs and prior meetings um, for a little while. So I sent along a few examples from other communities, not because I think they're perfect, just because I found them. And I thought there was a good mix of really concise and really broad. Um, so the, the question is, um, how formal do you want to be, um, you know, there's a simple way which is everyone can just email me their thoughts on goals and what we should focus on for the next year and midterm and I can consolidate that into categories and bullet points and, and give you something to look at in a future meeting. Um, we can spend a little bit of time on that now to give me some concepts or what so you know, we can go. doing that individually to meet the open meeting law standards. Yes. Okay. Um, and I can develop that into more of a formal document for you to review and consider. Um, it's also especially useful for me being new to you know, know exactly beyond the day to day that arises and the execution of the budget, what you want me focusing on for the longer term. Um, makes it a fair way to evaluate me too and how I'm getting those things done. So I think it's good for both of, for all of us to you know, hold me accountable to some of those things. Um, so I just wanted to get the conversation started to get input from the board on, on how you would like this process to go. I think that's a reasonable way to proceed. 
know, it's hard in an open meeting like this to do that before maybe getting some more input. But what's everyone else's thoughts? You know, I saw somebody at the, uh, I was talking to a stranger the other day from a completely different town. And we got talking about Waterbury and she looked right at me and said, you know what? Waterbury is one of the most resilient and well-maintained, well-run towns that I know of in the state of Vermont. And I, you know, I was tickled to death to hear that come out of a complete stranger's mouth. Uh, she didn't live here in Waterbury. She lived in a different town, but recognized the hard work that, you know, the people in this community have put together to, to keep this town uh, as, in, as, as inviting as it is and as high quality uh, of a lifestyle in the state of Vermont that you can possibly find. And uh, we should all be proud of that. And I think, you know, your efforts right now asking for uh, ideas to consider moving forward is another sign of good management, you know? Uh, and I think it's a great idea. And so, you know, I'll, I'll put a lot of thought into it. I've got some ideas already, obviously. Um, but yeah, I think it's a good part of the process of operating our town keeping up on things, being proactive. Roger. Um, well, Tom, I, I want to congratulate you on uh, putting together uh, what I thought was a really uh, good budget uh, in the face of a uh, fairly challenging uh, inflation situation. Um, and uh, one of the things that I think we all recognize is that uh, retaining good quality personnel uh, in this environment is going to be a challenge uh, for this town, for, for any organization. Um, and uh, so uh, one of the things when, when you sent that out that, that occurred to me was that uh, one of the ways that you can retain talent is to engage them uh, in making uh, improvements. Uh, like you know, We can sort of set some ideals as to what we'd like to see going, but part of that, uh, I would hope, would be to engage uh, the uh, town staff members in being part of the solution uh, and making things uh, more efficient, like uh, Chris has brought up a couple of times, uh, reducing the use of salt and being more efficient in the, the use of the, the highway equipment. Um, and uh, so, that would be one of the things that I would put on that list would be to, to make the staff part of the whole push forward to become more efficient uh, and uh, you know, better, better managed. Yeah. Mm. Good idea. Uh, Danny has her hand up. Thanks, um, Roger. That, thanks for that input. I, I fully agree, and I think that's such a great idea and really important as we move forward. Um, and then one of my, you know, I've got a little list as well, depending on how we want to carry forward, but um, looking at, you know, our municipal plan, there are, I think, you know, 10 or so sort of categories that might be really helpful to guide us as we plan. And some of them might not have some immediate short-term goals to put in those categories, but I think it's a nice way to start framing so we don't feel really overwhelmed with, you know, compiling. Um, so I wonder if putting it into a, a little chart or spreadsheet, like some of the examples you sent, Tom, with those categories, and then perhaps the board can go in and populate um, those categories with our ideas, and then maybe at future meeting we, we realistically look at this year, next year, three years, that kind of thing. That's a great place to start. Although I know Alyssa doesn't like the like planning and municipal plans in general. So. <laughs> <laughs> Danny brought it up, not me, in my defense. No <laughs> I also have two pages of planning notes here. Um. Thank you, Danny. Yep. Anyone else? 
Well, now that you've started it, now I same thing. As, same thing as Danny. I have some ideas I wrote down. I actually appreciate the note to consolidate through Tom because I think like we can all discuss together. But in some ways, if we're all thinking the same thing, it's great to have it on paper. Um, I would say of the examples, I probably land somewhere in the middle. I thought the South Burlington was like whoa and really <laughs> detail specific i love a table too but um but i also really appreciate the st albans of just saying kind of like if you prioritize everything nothing is a priority so to me you know a two-step where we collect ideas and then prioritize makes sense yeah. um, thanks for bringing it up i think it would be a great thing for us to have and be able to point to and be a unifying frame and one other thing i want to add here is I just want to make sure that we don't overload our new town manager <laughs> here, with, here. with excess amounts of complication. Uh, I, burnout, bur I, I worry about burnout factor too early in the game here. <laughs> I appreciate that, but I don't feel this is overloading. Well, I just want to make sure. To me, it's like right. giving me the game plan. Um, it's part of it. It's, it's about the, the balance of power between the manager and the board. I think without this, the, the balance of power um, is almost solely with me, and that's yeah. not what you want. Shared responsibility. Yeah. No, I just want to make sure that if you feel like, you know, too much, not necessarily now, but down the road, another year, who knows? Just, just keep us abreast of, you know, how much is too much. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I have, I've been having every Friday I have a sit down now, you know, which I didn't do with Bill, you know, but every Friday we kind of have a usually a 10, 10 o'clock sit down for hour, hour and a half, you know, going over stuff, going over things on the agenda. And I think that's been really helpful. And I want to, you know, I think it's, I know myself as a former manager, I don't want to, I also agree, I don't want to see Tom get burnt out, you know. We have to work together to create a better community. And I think that's also that, that's what leadership is all about. And I think we have a good team. And I think giving him some ideas on what he's given to us, I think that will help. The only thing I want to add right now, in terms of goals, can we get our screen to be a little brighter? <laughs> For those of us who may be a little visually challenged, it gets awful hard to see some of those hands ups um is that possible well we can invest in a new projector that's one option it's going to be costly um, i don't like that idea well the the chair of the edward Ford utility district would like to see a widescreen tv <laughs> that you know the projector could still be here could still be available for consumption but behind it in this exercise behind it would live a, a TV with a more LTD, uh, excuse me, LED screen type clarity. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I talked to Bob Butler about it briefly. If you're serious, then I will ask him yeah. to get us a quote. Yeah. But yeah. If you're talking and about an investment. I know I have a hard time picking up the little hand sometimes. Yeah. You know? And I'm, I'm not certain it's the screen. It's always, you know, the, the item. Yeah that's got the least resolution and I think that's the owl camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't so, I don't know about that. That uh, projector's like two hundred bucks. Yeah. Oh, so. <laughs> so, we can talk to Bob and yeah. get some ideas. So so old, old, old school or video old school. What's that? It's worth that. It's not what's that? Well, we're going to sell that out. But I know I I get crazy with, you know, I really have a hard time sometimes picking up the hands. Or if there's some way that you know, even there was a tone too associating when someone chimes in with a. Well, I'm not fixing Zoom. <laughs> I oh, I know that. I do something about that or that, but I can. Mm. Hot wire electric it. shock to your leg here. Yeah. Oh, somebody yeah. uses a hand. Yeah, I had a I had a Christian conversation with him, so. Yeah, I have I bet too. But that's you know at least let's look into you know what our options are for a little bit you know. I'm, I, I am fiscally conservative, but you know, sometimes good options. I don't want a big screen TV just to become a Super Bowl party kind of item. Understood. Understood. Stuff like that. But if it, if it would help make better meetings, I think you know we need to invest in our community. 
and I'm hoping it's not going to be like a twenty-five thousand dollar. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll get some. I'll get some information. Okay. Uh, my, yes. On a lighter note, um, the uh, a previous uh, municipal managers, one of his uh, objectives was to reduce burnout by merging the two municipalities, uh, the select board and uh, EFUD. Um, uh, became controversial at times, uh, and probably remains so to some extent. Um, I think we should have some type of conversation, uh, perhaps with EFUD, about what their vision is and whether, you know, what do we think about that concept and how soon would it come about? The pros and cons to merger, you mean? Yeah. The final merger? Right. Our plan to get there. Uh, or even, do, is that something that we want to do? Because, I mean, part of the burnout is that he has to manage two different municipalities. Uh, and it could be simpler if it were to be managed by one, but uh, that's not going to happen tomorrow. Why do you mention that? Because that was on a Friday discussion a little bit. We discussed that. But Just for the record, mm -hmm. I did vote for a merger mm -hmm. back in the day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Good enough. Okay. <laughs> Anything further? Okay, well, let's... I just wanted to look. I frame too. I'm just thinking in light of this conversation because I agree with you. Is this is framed as annual goals? In my mind, there's a spectrum between annual goals and three to five years goal. Uh -huh. Recognizing right. boards change as we all right. just acknowledge, but I think in some ways I wrote down annual goals, so I was actually kind of limited. And I will say the first I wrote was support municipal staff to execute effective and responsible. Ooh, responsible local government like for our now. residents. I do what I can. Um, but actually saying that, like, you know, before we can do anything else, we got to keep the lights on. No, I said uh, you sound like me. Like, no, I said I do what I can. <laughs> We're not so far apart. No. Um, anyway, um, anyway, but it says annual goals, and so I kept things to one year, but I think in the planning it might make sense to take three to five years and pick the three to five that are annual of one year recognizing some things might be more than one year. Point taken. Anything else? Oops, get me your ideas. If that will be Can you give us a deadline, please? <laughs> no, seriously, I'm <coughs> deadline oriented. Um, can you get them within a week and then we can have them on the agenda for the next I mean, week? I'm just going to send you a picture of my notebook pages, but yes, we're going to say end of the week. Or is that too soon for people? So for next... The next board meeting, we should have comments back to you about it. in time to for me to consolidate think, it all. And let's talk about this Friday, like a week from today, or even by this Friday. Which is, he's probably thinking sooner. You know, sooner. I'm not going to be at the first meeting in March because it's the well, I don't think they're going to have the first meeting in March, but mm -hmm. maybe you can make. You know, so the twenty seventh, right? We canceled the sixth because it's we? the day oh, before okay. town meeting. Right? Yeah, yeah, right. I think that was the idea. I didn't know we'd made Before. it March, but I'm going to make sure the calendar's like that. Right. Or that's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking you could discuss goals at that meeting, but if you're not having it, then that's out. So. Could you get it by the 22nd, which would be a Wednesday? This meeting? Yeah. Sure. Of March? Of February. Oh, nine, nine days. Days. Your thoughts. Are, right. The annual thing. Laundry list of goals to tell. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. Okay, we're on the one. Moving on to the next first. item, the hanging of the new banner. I know we discussed this as well. Um, and the new banner will be here. Uh, it was supposed to be here today, but I got uh, busy in the morning and distracted trying to move kids out of the house onto the school bus. So I didn't pick it up this morning, but it's, it's in Essex. So I'm going to grab it on my way in tomorrow. We, we looked at, yes, the banner's tattered. It definitely needs to be replaced. Roger had an excellent suggestion that we should have some sort of a formalized, you know, select board, you know, inviting the public to have some sort of like a rehanging event. I know I heard through the, through the grapevine that Chris thought it was a good idea, which I think is an excellent idea that maybe instead of replacing the banner with a, you know, for this time we have to do the vinyl, but vinyl 
is not final. And um, I know Chris thought it would be a good idea to put some sort of a wooden hanging, you know, not permanent, but you know, it will still hang, but you know, in some sort of a wooden format. I thought that was an excellent idea. One, I like supporting the wood products industry, anything that, that does, <laughs> does things with wood is a good thing. I know Tom kind of mentioned that you might even be interested in possibly helping the town. With yeah, that project. that's where I have some restraints there because I, my time frame, if, if I had the time, you know, um, I'm not set up to do signs per se. That's not my forte by any stretch, but not to say that I couldn't do it. It's just, I'm so overwhelmed all the time with workload that uh, to find the time to do something like that, even though I'd love to take a stab at it. Uh, uh, I thought it was a good suggestion, and even we might yeah. just be looking, you know, it's not like we're getting a new vinyl one, so it, the, it's not a pressing kind of thing. It probably wouldn't be maybe a, we would do something for next year. Right. But, you know, so we have time to go out, some sign shops, you know, see what, a, you know, the cost of that would be. And again, yeah. my philosophy, I like helping the wood products industry. I well, I guess my thought was, as opposed to replacing, you know, the cloth ones every two years. Right. If it's something that the town is going to, you know, keep hanging for now till somebody else changes their mind, then perhaps investing in something a little more durable and uh, nicer looking would be uh, more appropriate. So, in the long run, pay for itself. I agree. We'll find out what the cost is. I don't, you know, I don't know what the cost for a wooden banner would be, but. We have time and we'll find out, I guess. And any input you could give, because I know you have a lot of woodworking knowledge that you would well appreciate, Chris. Yeah. Any other ideas on the, on the banner? Well, right. uh, in the shorter term, uh, Tom has ordered a new banner. Right. Uh, and uh, so uh, ostensibly we'd be taking the old one down and putting a new one up, and uh, I just uh, thought if we're going to do that, we should might want to do it publicly and invite uh, anyone that wants to participate. And, uh, just uh, uh, that simple ceremony. Um, uh, we could perhaps uh, try to set a date to do that. I don't know yeah, I think um, I, at first when I had talked to Tom about it, I thought, you know, maybe we, we don't need to really do anything in that um, it's sort of a fixture now that we've decided and it's sort of just replacing the old with the new. But Roger, I like the idea of just letting the public know and inviting them. Um, I also, when you were just talking, thought maybe there are some... Um, I think people that we could reach out to, I'm just thinking brainstorming out loud. So, but I think potentially doing a sort of land acknowledgement before we do that um, might be appropriate. Um, I, I mean, I think the banner, we've all talked about the merits of, of what it does and why it's there. Um, so I'm wondering how, you know, how do we make, a little bit extra of a positive impact when all we're doing is replacing the old with the new. So um, there may be some folks in town, like perhaps we put it on Front Porch Forum um, and ask if there's a volunteer who might like to do a land acknowledgement. Um, and then maybe a board member could say something. It doesn't need to be huge, but something, you know, meaningful. And hey, Danny, there's some conversation in the room. Could you just explain to folks what a land acknowledgement is and when it might be used? Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you. So um, it can be used in all kinds of situations, but it's essentially acknowledging the land that we're on, particularly here in Waterbury, Vermont, that belonged to the natives of the land before we came um, and settled here. So it's acknowledging the original people of the area, um, you know, ex can express gratitude. It can explain a little history of the area. Generally, it's it can be anywhere from just one sentence to a whole paragraph. So um, it's 
you know, a way to acknowledge the fact that we're on, on land that didn't belong to us originally, um, express gratitude for it. Um, and that's, you know, just a part of, of the statement of welcoming all and, and being as inclusive um, as possible as a town. So Danny, I, I'm glad you, you know, came up with that suggestion. Uh, I want you guys to know that this topic creates some anxiety in, in me because I paid a heavy toll throughout this process of where this started from the original request of the mural when I suggested can we have something more inclusive and was attacked for weeks on end, months on end, uh, to the point where the night of the discussion of, you know, and I, and I, you have to excuse me, I remember all the meetings and everything that took place as if it took place yesterday because it impacted me in such a difficult way. Um, right down to the point where the BLM banner for a second time was requested to be hung through discussion. My wife, who ended up being here, requested the uh, Declaration <coughs> of Inclusion to be read out loud. Uh, and at the end of that reading, when I said I had an epiphany, what if we used a part of this declaration as a banner and was attacked even then, resulting in that actually being done, I am a great supporter of this banner. Uh, the anxiety that I still go through from time to time because of what happened makes me want to express to you people another concern of mine. The banner is supposed to represent, in my opinion, uh, a coming together of different races, different sexes, uh, different religions. But I think we're missing another big diversity part of what this banner should mean, and that is differences in opinions, differences in philosophies, differences in education levels. Because although the banner does represent the compassion to have everybody care about everybody based on colors and flaw and 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 races uh, sexes and uh religion perhaps but when it comes to opinions and uh you know those other things education there's certain groups of people that aren't willing to tolerate those differences uh and i've been thinking about a lot of it is due to social media, to perception of one person's opinion expressed to another about another person, when in fact never knowing that other person, never talking to that other person. Our behind the scenes class in diversity with Mary, you remember Danny, right? My biggest takeaway from that, and I think I told you, the biggest takeaway I think that a lot of us got out of that was the fact that we were able to let each other know a little bit about ourselves. I feel like that was huge in bringing us together and, and 
laying out the common ground that we all have, uh, which was in turn gave us the ability to work together a little bit easier, even though we have differences. Another thing that proves to me that this ought to be a part of what this sign represents is the fact that the hiring of this man here through that process with all the different people that played in that participation didn't all agree on the same thing from a, on a day-to-day -day basis, but yet we all chose the same person. That to me showed, even with our differences, we have common ground. <coughs> and what bothers me the most in our community is that, and what I recognize most as time goes on, and the demographics change in this town, the people that I used to know have either left or died. And I'm day after day being left standing, knowing less and less people in my community. And that troubles me, uh, knowing those people on a personal level. That troubles me because there was a time when I knew all those people, even with our differences, we still called each other friend. And I wanted to somehow, I've been to the Grange Hall to, to speak to Monica Callan. Uh, you people, some of you people know it, that I have asked her to consider maybe a once a month gathering of local Waterbury neighbors where you could go and each one at their own choosing stand up on stage and maybe talk to each other about who am I, where do I come from, why am I here. Uh, that I'm not getting much response there, maybe because of many reasons, uh, busy schedule, who knows. Um, so I was thinking, how can we sink more teeth into this meaning of this banner? Would something like a round table meeting at the school gym, like we've had in the past for other reasons before, but where people, local people, neighbors in town of Waterbury would gather and we would have several different round tables where each person could gather at a table with others of who they don't know and have conversation in this round table discussion about each other and talk about different things, get to know each other a little bit, maybe close the gap on this div divisiveness that is tearing apart a lot of our communities throughout the nation. Uh, it's just a suggestion. I don't know. I want to, you know, to, to hang a banner that's been hung for two years. It means what it means to some people, but to a lot of people, it has no teeth to it. You know, where does it go from here? Where's the action items behind that? to make that banner become something more than just a banner. So that's my, that's my two cents for what it's worth. Thanks, Chris. Alyssa and I had a short conversation and said uh, what you just said at the very end. The banner is important and we know that, but it's already there. And where are the action items? What's next? Um, so I think we're on the same page in that regard. I think it takes a little bit of, of planning. It's actually one of the things I want to put in our annual goals um, that we just talked about. So, so I don't know, and I don't know if it's something that we can put together in the next couple, week, you know, before we get that new banner up. But um, if other folks have suggestions, I'd love to hear it. And if not, then maybe we do put it on, on, on that annual goal and we start strategizing as a, as a team. I don't think it would be very hard. To, you know, maybe you just do it as a informal potluck or something like that. You could put that together pretty quick. I would just want to be careful, Mike, because what we're talking about is really personal, philosophical, right. political, 
And I would want to be very careful and, and plan really well. Do we have a moderator? Are there questions? Yeah. When do we stop a conversation? When do we, you know, so um, maybe it's just a potluck that is just a community potluck without that, you know, but do, you know, I, I don't know if that's what we're looking for, right? If we're really looking for something meaningful, I think we we want to really plan it um, super intentionally. I understand, and that may be if we do like next year, do this wood sign or something like that, mm -hmm. that would be the time to do that. But I think it's mm -hmm. something other than just standing by the banner, raising it up and having Lisa taking a picture of us. I think, that, you know, that's all nice, but it's nice to, have, I, I like the, I really, what I heard from Chris that I like is people talking to each other and maybe that's you just have the rules of the potluck because you don't talk to people you know. You talk to yeah. people you don't know. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, it could be as simple as that. Yeah. You know, you know, but that's a first start. You know, and, and, and then, yes, I agree with you, Danny, to have something that's quite meaningful, we're not going to be able to do in two, three weeks or whatever time it's going to take. No. So it's something, yes, we could look for maybe you know, if we do some, and maybe that's a good idea is to have that in conjunction with a more permanent kind of a sign next year. Just my thoughts. Others? Roger? Um, yeah, I mean, I would really like Chris's idea as well of having sort of more structured round table groups and maybe a move from one group to the next. Uh, is, you get yeah. to know more people and you know, get to know people's names and what they think and so forth. Uh, for this, um, uh, I guess one thing that I might suggest would be to allow people uh, like maybe a minute to uh, just express what the banner means to them uh, at the uh, ceremony. And, and that could be you know, something like Chris uh, was was saying, you know, it brings up certain issues, it's going to bring up different issues for different people. Um, but that could be meaningful and without having to go through all, you know, having a potluck, we're going to be doing this within the next uh, month or so. Uh, we're not going to be having a potluck outdoors. Uh, I, would <laughs> I was thinking like St. Leo Hall. A couple of days yeah. would be good. <laughs> but, yeah, no, no, I think that's a good idea. Uh, but I, I also agree with Danny that it's probably going to need a little bit more structure than uh, a group of people standing around a banner coming down and another one going up. Well, there's another aspect of this too, Danny, that I'm interested in is, you know, by getting to know your neighbors better, there may be some oppor business opportunities there as well that you don't know, but your neighbor down the road is... Uh, graphics designer or a violin teacher or you know it's it those types of things themselves can also come out of these conversations which in turn brings us closer as community as well and you know and the potluck thing the the problem that i see with most of these gather public gatherings is people who know each other typically stick to their groups and i'm trying to you know, make all those little groups one one group, if if possible. You know, so that everybody at least yeah. have some idea of. That's like last week. Who I went to the RW business mixer, and I found out a couple of businesses I never even knew existed. I never knew we had a um, an Uber service here in Port, you know Waterbury. That kind of blew my mind. You know, so. It just, I think, you know, you can in different, and I always try to make it introduce myself to new people versus people who I already know at, at an event like that. But yes, you have to do that to, as you said, if you have a pop, people are gonna congregate among their own and figure out a way to avoid that. We need to break that ice, you know. So what's your pleasure on this? Uh, um, do we wanna do something? Or do we want to just well, I'm just saying, moving or... forward, I think the banner hanging is probably an appropriate suggestion. But moving forward, I want to think about a bigger uh, something with some teeth in it that that can make that banner 
you know, more important than it is already. I agree. So in terms of the banner, it's obviously soon to be here. It's in the state. Um, so if we want to do something, I mean, just Danny shared, but I echo, I think it's great if we want to do a ceremony. I think it's a strong statement that we're reaffirming it. I would not want that to be our only work. So I think this point of, you know, I wasn't on the board when you all did an equity training. So does that become something that's annual? What are these other events we could look at? I think is all great. Um, I guess, Roger, were, did, were you thinking of a timeline? I'm thinking of town meeting. You know, would this be something small you want to do in the next weekend or two? You know, I, I think we're hearing there's a lot of work that could be done. And so we probably want to revisit this for a bigger conversation about future efforts. So that's one piece I'm hearing thoughts on. And then there's this short term effort. So, yeah, yeah um, I am uh, sensitive to the fact that we do have uh, an election coming up. Uh, and this could be viewed as political. Uh, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, Think of that, but yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, so, good point. Uh, you know, I think either we could do it uh, at the end of town meeting day or after town meeting. I don't think it is really appropriate to do it before town meeting, given the fact that we're already within the election cycle, really. I just, my, my opinion. I would agree with you on that. Yeah. So if you're... Other thought? I actually was not, to be clear, actually getting on that at all. And I admit my bias there. But um, in that case, I would say then you would probably want whoever that board to be to all support that. So I guess that pauses that. Hmm. Right. right? If that's your... I guess my thing was either... I think if this board wants to say the five of us who are the board right now who are elected... Mm -hmm. want to reaffirm that commitment and do a new banner, I think we can do that. And if not, I think it becomes a conversation about what does this board do annually to say, this is the thing, we're readopting it, and here's our project for the year, you know, around equity. Yeah, I mean, if we, if we don't think it's particularly political, then I would say let's do it ASAP, uh, but give people at least a week's notice uh, that it would happen. So and work out the details of what exactly the agenda right. and whatnot is. Well, I mean, it's the fact that we've got the new banner already made right. doesn't necessarily mean that it has to go up immediately either. Just, I, I don't know if there was a sense of urgency from, from you all for that reason, but, uh, you know, Roger and Alyssa got both good points on both sides mm -hmm. of the aisle here. So I don't, I don't know what the solution is. Yeah, my, my answer is urgency was that uh, I was just looking at it the other day and it was folded <laughs> yeah. in half. You can't, you can't see it, uh, which means it's like pretty sad right. uh, not doing its job. Uh, so, um, this guy, 13th. So, do you want to do something right off or do you want to wait until after? What's your pleasure? You, you have a hand up in the audience, Mike. Right? I just, um, I, I think that everybody's made valid points, and I think that because we do have the election coming up, that if there's really no reason it has to be done prior to uh, town meeting day. So, my input is to keep it simple for everybody, since it could be seen as being political, and do it after the election. And then the board can do whatever it wants to support it. The only side of that is that the if there are new board members, there would be different, it might be different inputs, you know, at that point in time. We don't well, I wanted to bring up one point that I think was made <coughs> back before that, uh, um, well, the banner would stay up until the elected officials decided otherwise, uh, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Um, so to do it, I don't know how that will look to do it so soon before the election, not, as, not as giving, going, not giving, or possibly going out. not giving the new elected officials say in it, at least for another year or whenever it comes about to be replaced again, uh, whichever comes first. Uh, right. I don't know if this needs to be a yearly affirmation, if that's the right word. Um, 
because I think what my understanding right. wasn't that it was going to be like a yearly vote or right, a yearly right. reaffirmation. It was just going to be like if a board member wanted to raise it. Um, so I'm okay either way. If folks feel uncomfortable doing it before election, you know, before election, I'm, I'm fine. It does look a little ratty. I'd love to see it replaced. But the other thing is, yeah, I mean, we as a board supported it and, and it's on record. So I don't, it's not like you're changing your political views in before election. You know, hopefully no one would see it that way because you've already affirmed it. You've already voiced your opinion. It's not a change. Um, so, but yeah, I think I'm, I'm, de I'm fine with whatever the consensus is. <laughs> I think that's the part of the consensus. Candidly, I think air quote, the event is what makes it political. So I'm just gonna put my cards on the table and I thought Tom was just gonna order it and go stick it up there on a put Tuesday morning while cars were driving by. And, and I respect folks saying that we should pause and I really appreciate raising the point, but I guess I just wanted to throw that as another option, which is say, if we think the banner which we've all by consensus agreed and voted to be raised is falling apart. A new one could be put up there and a affirmation style ceremony could wait until after the election right. and whoever is here to That's come up with that. that. Well, I'm gonna put the burden on the rest of you and say, I don't, it doesn't matter to me how we do it. So, no, I think that's <laughs> you got whatever you guys decide is. If we have the banner, so it's not flying up there looking really ratty, we could put it up and then have a ceremony Basically, it's, you know, it's not kind of a reason because it's there, but have an affirmation ceremony. I think that would that would work af after town meeting. Or can you tighten the one that's up there now? No, I can't. Yeah, do it's it's, it's going to be flying in the air pretty quick. All right. Yeah, I was afraid to. Right. I'll, I'll, I'll move that uh, Tom uh, and Woody uh, replace the banner uh, as soon as practical, uh, and that uh, if the Board, the, the new board uh, that's elected after a town meeting decides to have an affirmation <coughs> ceremony, and we'll, we can do that at that time whenever they decide. Thank you. We have a second. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Okay. Now we're on to the last item on the agenda is consider resolution and budget for better connections grant. We see Steve is rapidly coming to the table. again. Yes. And yes. I'm doing double duty tonight, so thanks for uh, incorporating this. So this is a continuation of the conversation from the prior meeting when we talked about the better connections grant. Um, in your packet there um, is uh, the resolution itself, it's a requirement to apply for the grant. Just as a refresher, this is uh, looking at um, Waterbury Center Village, trying to figure out how we can uh, better connect the different parts of the village that uh, are divided, kind of divided by the stream there below the seminary building, looking at uh, pedestrian uh, connections, looking at uh, calming traffic, looking at um, how to make it safer, more welcoming, if you will. And uh, there's a map in your packet that shows the, um, the whole area that's basically bounded by Waterbury Center State Park on the west, the uh, Hope Davy Park on the east, the Seuss, former Seuss building to the north, the town garage to the south. So it takes in that whole area. Uh, we've been working with different stakeholders. Um, with uh, Monica and Peter with the Grange Hall, working with uh, Revitalizing Waterbury, working with Friends of Waterbury Reservoir, uh, Children's Literacy Foundation, they're all in real support of the project. So that's a good thing. We're kind of building a team that will work on this together and then we'll have it open to the general public. Uh, it'll be a very public process. Uh, there's a work plan and budget in your packet that um, will be part of the application. And um, in a nutshell, it's about a um, $70,000 project as uh, we envision it. Tom and I have gone through this um, work plan that identifies the different tasks. We would hire a consultant. Uh, there'd be a steering committee form that would uh, be representatives of the, of the different stakeholder groups and um, businesses in the area. 
uh, people who live in the area, perhaps people who live outside the, of that area, be similar to our park study, you know, a group of 10 or 12 people that would guide the project. Uh, they'd be a series of meetings that'd be open to the public. Um, and we'd really try to find out what people think is the best way to move forward in, um, in the area and what the concerns are. There was good support in the ARPA survey for doing something, especially around pedestrian and ADA access. So um, I mentioned it's about a $70,000 project as we envision it. There's a 10% local match that would be uh, likely to be spread over two years. So the budget impact is, um, is pretty moderate. Uh, the grants are due this Friday. So um, my task right now is to do the actual writing of the grant. I've started on that, um, working with, uh, of course, with, with Tom and um, the RW, Karen Nevin, and Jane Brown, that's kind of been the, the inside team on this. Um, so what we're really looking for tonight, see if you have any questions about the project, uh, concerns, and then um, ultimately, we, um, in order to apply for the grant, we would need you to approve the resolution and sign it. The Planning Commission <coughs> discussed the project earlier uh, this evening. They're in support of it. And uh, Martha signed the resolution, so um, they're on board. And um, with that, I open it up to any questions that you might have. Or Tom, if you had anything you wanted to add, that's fine too. Thank you, Tom. Um, so when when I read the ARPA survey results, um, I didn't, you know, keep a count, but. My impression was a lot of people made comments about Waterbury Center and the need for um, some pedestrian improvements and in general some infrastructure improvements in that area. Uh, that that came through pretty clear to me. I thought so. I think this is important because it's going to guide that in theory for you know the next five years, depending on what happens here. So I think it's important enough that if if the grant is not awarded. Um, I want to consider something like ARPA to jumpstart the project. I think it's a good application. Hopefully, it'll be awarded. But yeah, I think we've got a pretty good shot at it. But that's uh, good. We can move forward in some other way. We also look uh, at stormwater management. Uh, there was a study done by the state about five years ago looking at uh, potential water quality improvements in that area in terms of treating. Stormwater, so we look at potential locations for green stormwater facilities on um, town owned property or where we might be a willing landowner. Old fire pond there, we might, uh, Sid Durstenville, we may be able to adapt, we'll see. But uh, that's it. Roger. I move that uh, we approve the resolution for uh, our community connections grant. Is there a second? I'll second. Discussion? I I have one, uh, not problem, but our share of this project, is this in our existing budget? Or how would we deal with that? It is not in the budget as a separate line item, but it's about $7,000 over the I know it's not a lot, but we can. So we can move things around. Um, we can make that work in the broader context of it, and probably in 2024 we might budget a little bit to make up for it if there's any okay. issue in 2023. I just didn't want to know that we're just we're in a hole somewhere that we can't do what we agreed to do. No, I think we'll be fine. Okay. Melissa? No, I just wanted to thank Steve, um, I think, for putting it all together. And it seems to really amplify, like Tom said, all of the input we heard on the ARPA feedback. Yeah. I think it's really important because I think Waterbury Center has really lost its identity ever since, you know, TJ's mm. market, you know, went away. It's just, you know, then it kind of had, it was something. Now it's kind of just, like, it's, 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 it's the park and it doesn't have really as much of an anchor and you know have an identity and services you know <coughs> very centers, just like people in the village all those people live out of, out of town 
Yeah, okay. we've got you know activity in the Route 100 corridor with right. Children's Literacy Foundation and the cannabis store, and I mean there's some revitalization going on, but it's also going to create a draw. And but it's more the Route 100 <coughs> corridor right. versus you know right. kind of the area around the triangle. I, I agree, it's uh, I mean, it's, it's kind of a black hole now. Yeah. Roger. Um, Steve, last time uh, you mentioned that uh, this would uh, potentially allow us to expand the downtown designation to include uh, the uh, Waterbury Center Village. So, oh, Is that explain. True? So we already have a designated village center right. in Waterbury Center around the vicinity of the Triangle. Oh, this okay. is, we have a designated downtown here, right. but in Waterbury Center about five years ago, we got village center designation for the area or whole area around triangle. the triangle mm -hmm. and so what this if we get the grant do the project we would be eligible for what are called downtown transportation fund grants mm -hmm. that we've received we're working with one right now on Randall street for your sidewalks <laughs> and uh <clears throat> which is funding those three quarters done yeah right next year they'll be finished um work in rusty parker park so we we could potentially have state funding to maybe implement some of the recommendations of this study if we are able to get the, get it funded. So that's well, I think it's important. I support it. Okay, good. Any further discussion? I was just gonna say that any any uh, positive improvements are certainly worthwhile. So good. Okay. Anything else? If not, we'll vote. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Any Great. opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries you now. So the last step is if you don't mind signing it while you're here, that would be awesome. Yeah, do that. <clears throat> and then Danny, maybe, I don't know if there's a time this week you can swing by the office. Yeah, I'm coming in tomorrow afternoon, so I'll oh, great. swing by. Okay, I should be there and we'll, I'll have it at, on Karen's okay, uh, desk. Sign, so oh, great, okay. No, that'd be great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you as always, Steve. Oh yeah, you're very welcome. I think it's an exciting project and we'll um, hopefully give it a good shot. So I miss seeing you in that chair. Oh, okay. Well, I'm yeah, not disappearing for a while. Well, so. <laughs> it, when it, it's coming though. It's coming. It's inevitable. It is. It is. It's true. <laughs> we may have to give you naming rights for the, for the project. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't need to be named for anything. Just good memory. <laughs> All right, great. Thank you, Steve. You know another old white guy, something named after an old white guy, do you? <laughs> hey, someone who's done a lot for the town. I know. I'm just being a little facetious. I know. <laughs> I said, oh, hang on, Karen. I, I buried it way too quickly. Yes, thank you. We're so excited. Okay. I know, I know. No, thank, you, thank, thank, thank you, Steve. Public Planning everybody. Commission, thank you. Okay, we see them. you later. All right. Okay, we're at the end of the agenda. The only thing I do want to put on, it's more for a parking lot issue, because I know we did amend the agenda. Um, at the Rural Emergency Management uh, Committee's uh, meeting last week, as we were discussing before, they, they talked about uh, select boards participation in the emergency management process which I think is really important. I know I've taken, I thought I was gonna become, you know, emergency management director, both with Asian parents and stuff like that. I kind of stepped away. And I thank Gary for doing that, and he's done a great job. But there are, I think it's really important that we all know a little bit about emergency management. And Vermont Emergency Management has a class for, designed for select boards. You know, it's probably not gonna be a one hour kind of thing. It's probably gonna be, you know, a two to four hour kind of deal. You know, we could do it either before a select board meeting or just schedule it at some other time. But I think it would be just good not, and I, that's just kind of a parking lot thing, but I probably, you know, would like to see us do it sooner than later, probably again after the election when we you know have another you know whatever the board may uh, wind up being after that so that's just the parking lot and I don't know do we want to start 
formulating that with Vermont Emergency Management? Harry Schaffman said he'd be glad to do that. Maybe we just get something pinned down for a day as kind of an informal opinion. People think that's a good idea. Well, I've been there, done it, and uh, I can't think of a bigger horse drink or either. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe that's because I'm in the industry I'm in, so a yeah. lot of it's second nature to me. But I'm a little bit the same. You know, I understand because I did a lot of disaster, you know, in the Virgin Islands, different flood things around the country. Oh, you know, pick a nice place to go for a disaster. But uh, <laughs> no, it's, no, it's not. Well, After Hurricane Hugo, you you wouldn't want to be there. Green with MPs, with M16s. It's it's not a fun place to be after a hurricane. Okay. But uh, it's, I just think it, some of it's important. It's some of it's just knowledge that we get. I understand sometimes it's a little bit, I went through the full eight hour emergency That's management what, director training. As well. And yeah. it could be a little, a, a little bit, but there's a lot of concepts you learn that, and just to, it's just more of an awareness. I think that to me is important. You know, we're the leaders of the community. You know, we should. You know, in the case of disaster, you know, yes, you may be familiar about what to do. I know Gary's a little bit the same. I know Gary is not a big want to go into trainings and stuff like that. I'm sure he has a share of them with the fire department, but I think just knowledge is important. Maybe that's a little bit of a planner in me. Yeah, a lot of times emergencies will throw curveballs at you that oh. even the, even the best first person isn't prepared for. You know, a lot of times it's uh, I guess reactionary, if that's the right word. You do what you got to do under the circumstances. You know, but we talked about that. You know, like when we had Irene here, it's does it fall to the chair of the select board? Does it fall to the town manager, like right. public information officer. I think Bill did a lot of that function. Yeah, we had a chart. Of, yeah, it's online. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Um, you know, by default, <coughs> who's in charge down to right. the list. So. And it's just awareness that, you, you know, when disaster happens, you know, you kind of don't want to just be trying to thumb through, the, you know, if you know kind of who's Who's the Who to go to? incident yeah. commander and stuff like that? I bet you if we went around the table, most people would would know who that would be. Why don't you email it to Tom by the twenty second as an idea for your annual three and five tier plan that we do annual emergency management will, I, training, and I, we can I, vote I, on it then because I'm totally supportive, and that way it gets on the annual it's, it's planning on. site. <coughs> Perfect. Do you think this would be like just uh, somebody coming and? Right. It'd be, uh, just right. It'd be a, it'd, it'd be outside of a normal select board meeting, and, and and we could do that, and it doesn't violate town town uh, the open meeting law because if you're in training, that's not considered. He's, even though we're there, we're not. It's not considered a violation even if all five of us are there. So we're good to go. Puts my mind at rest. That was my, one of my first questions. I thought about it, that I think I know that's correct, but it is. What are the Anything else? If not, I'm, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 aye.